for the next few minutes right now, we're just going to worship the Lord for a few minutes and uh, prepare our hearts as we um, um, come to the conclusion of the service. And like I said, Preston's going to come back and we're going to pray. Uh, pray also for everyone to have an opportunity to give their hearts to Jesus. I want to say to everybody watching at home once again, Line, uh, live and um, it's encouraging thank you for your prayers for my family also for the church as we pray for you continue to pray for us and continue to send in your praise reports through you know through emails phone calls or through um, social media um, we are reading them we are receiving them and they are making a difference so thank you from the bottom of my heart amen what I want to do is just for the next few minutes right now we also have talking about you know, one touch from Jesus, and Preston, you were mentioning that um, in 2005, you know, on that canal, one touch, God set you free, and uh, God raised you up to move forward for the glory of God. One encounter with Jesus, and we believe that in this place, that, we'd, that we believe in loving people back to life. Now, as long as there's breath in your lungs and you're breathing, you're alive, there's time to get it right. There's time to turn it around. There's time, amen? We believe that that's what this church is all about. That's what the spirit of this church is all about, amen? And right now, we're also going to be mailing out as we continue during this time. We are moving forward. Um, that word you just gave, we are on the offensive here. Um, just got off the phone with um, Pastor George in Uganda. They've been on lockdown also, um, but they're um, looking um, here in the near future to, for things to start to reopen, and, we're gonna, and he's going to get back to work at building the orphanage that we're, that we're working together with, Fire and Water Orphanage in Uganda. And uh, so we are moving forward, amen. They're going to they're gonna start finishing up some other um, aspects of the buildings there, and we'll have some reports for you and some pictures. We're so excited uh, about impacting and, and bringing hope to these children, amen, on the other side of the world. Um, what a privilege God has given us, amen. But also, the prison ministry, we're about to mail out, as we do every month now, um, as we've been doing for many years, we're going to be giving out and sending out CDs and information and encouraging letters to the prisoners in Arizona and throughout the country. And um, so, praise God. What I want to do is just for the next few minutes, Pastor Tony, why don't you come up also right now? And while we, and I want you at home to stretch out your hands, just come in agreement. Um, we got all the packages. We got a whole bunch of, they're going to be going out this week. We're going to be mailing them out on Monday, Monday or Tuesday. And let's pray um, for the fire of God to spread. If someone doesn't know Jesus, that they come in a relationship with God. If they need a healing, a touch, encouragement, and, um, and just breakthrough and turnarounds. And when they move forward, that God's going to raise them up to be preachers and evangelists, to, to, to make a difference in the world that, that they're in. Amen. So that truly it's not the way you start, it's the way you finish. Amen. And some of the greatest uh, 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 champions right now are in prison. Uh, and all they need is some encouragement. All they need is someone to believe in them. All they need is someone to love them back to life. And that's what we're doing here. That's what we believe in this church. And uh, so we're going to, why don't we pray? And then also, why don't we do this? Why don't we pray for the offering also? I want you to pray for the offering. I want to say thank you once again for your faithfulness during this time. Um, as far as your giving, God bless every one of you as you are um as you uh, have obeyed the lord we continue to just persevere and move forward amen and uh again thank you so much so pastor tony why don't you pray and i think they're showing on the screen different ways that you can give during this time and again i can't emphasize thank you so much for your trust and your obedience amen let's pray let's pray for these letters these cds information going out that whatever prison whatever yard whatever pod wherever they may end up at that lives will be transformed let's bind the lives of the enemy you know some of these guys that are in there women that are in there right now we're gonna pray and we're gonna stand in the gap for them as we send this material we're gonna stand in the gap and we're gonna pray that this material that the anointing that's in this house would flow through these letters through this information and that when people read them that their lives will be changed and transformed by the power of God we're gonna lose 
We're going to lose the blessings of God in those prisons right now. Those that are watching right now, let's pray together right now. We're going to agree as touching anything right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we come before you right now, my God. Father, we pray that in Jesus' name, we pray, my God, as we send this information, these CDs, my God, these letters, that they encourage, Father, that they lift up, my God, that they bring out, my God, the best of those men and women in Jesus' mighty name, that the lives of the enemy, my God, will be vanished right now in Jesus' name. Father, you have called some of them. You have touched some of them before. Father, they may be in that situation, but Lord, you can still get a hold of them, my God, and we pray that you break the chains even inside the prisons, my God drug addiction, suicidal thoughts, homosexuality, in Jesus' mighty name, set free, my God, touch lives, rescue, deliver, breakthrough, chains undone in the name of Jesus. Father, that when we hear the testimonies, your name will be glorified, your name will be lifted up, my God, and we declare right now that the blood of Jesus be upon every woman, every man, Father God, in those prisons. Wherever they may go right now, Father God, may your Holy Spirit go with them, my God, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the breakthrough. We thank you for the turnaround. We thank you for the miracles, salvation, healing, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, my Father, that you are still God and you are still on your throne, my Lord. And you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you're still doing miracles today, my God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. And at this time, we pray for the offering. Thank you, my God, for your faithfulness. Thank you that you've never left us. You've never forsaken us, my God. Thank you, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Lord, for each and every person who's given their offering, their tithes, my God. I pray that you put your hand upon them, that you continue to bless them. Father, that those that cannot at this time, Lord, that you will open the windows of heaven, that in the next time, on the next time, there will be a testimony connected to the provision, my God, that you have provided. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you, Father. Bless this offering, bless these ties, that it be tied to souls, salvation and healing, not just here in Phoenix, but around the world, my God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. What we're going to do right now is we're just going to worship the Lord for a few minutes and just a time of thanksgiving that we have the victory. Amen. We have the victory. We have the victory. And God is in control. Amen. Uh, and then I'm going to have Pastor Preston's going to come back up here um, and pray with you um, as we conclude the service. And Preston, you just be led by the Spirit as the Holy Spirit leads you. If you have words of knowledge or you just be led by the Spirit of God and also of course the most important thing greatest miracle of all which is salvation and Preston's gonna lead us in a prayer of salvation amen I want to encourage you also um, we'll be back tomorrow morning live at 10 30 a.m. 10 30 in the morning so please get the word out uh, look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow morning but also we're coming back with um, prayer meeting Monday night we had a live prayer meeting about two weeks ago, and it was awesome. God definitely shifted some things. Altars um, were being built for the glory of God. So many great testimonies. So many, just the, the response was just phenomenal as we all came together uh, in agreement. And I believe there's going to be, uh, again, uh, the same results and even greater for the glory of God. This coming up Monday as we come in agreement. Monday night, 7 p.m. Arizona time, 7 p.m., um, live prayer online so please make plans to join us send in your prayer requests and we're going to pray here Monday night live and we're going to come in agreement with whatever the need might be as you um, um, send them in we're going to pray live together we're going to pray for our nation we're going to pray for our leaders we're going to pray for the world we're going to pray for your individual prayer requests whatever they might be and we're going to pray live on Monday 7 p.m. We look forward to connecting to you, with you on Monday also. Amen. Praise the Lord. We love you. God bless you. We're going to worship the Lord, and I'm going to have Pastor Preston come back over here and minister. And Preston, would you do me a favor also at a certain point? 
let them know about Teen Challenge, how they can get a hold of people. You know, if, they, if someone, because we know the, the program, which is Jesus, Teen Challenge, so many of that have been touched and impacted. Um, one, uh, so many here at the church as a byproduct from Teen Challenge, where their lives have been transformed and turned around and are actively involved in our church today. So if maybe someone has a, you know, knows somebody or maybe someone's struggling, they heard your testimony um, because that's where you went. You graduated, you were on staff, and uh, powerful program. And we'll get that information out to everybody also, please, to make yourselves available to someone you might know or maybe yourself. And there's also, not just for men, but also for women. There's Teen Challenge Women, Home of Hope in Casa Grande, um, which is awesome. Just awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. Come on.
David, after he had served the purpose of God, fulfilled the purpose of God for his generation, fell asleep. He breathed his last breath. You see, as long as there's breath in your lungs, it means that God isn't done, that his story isn't over. It's not too late for you. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you were doing this afternoon. There's no place that the, God, the hand of God can't reach into and bring you out of. There's no problem. There's no crisis. There's no situation that you're facing right now that the kingdom of God doesn't have provision for if you'll just look to him. You see the greatest miracle that we can experience is to allow the creator of this planet, Jesus, all things were made by him and through him and for him. The one who came and died on a cross that we might have life into our hearts. There's no place he can't love you out of. There's no sin he won't forgive you of. There's no addiction. There's no degree of depression or suicide that he can't break you out of and deliver you out of this evening. But the first step is inviting him into your heart. Making him the Lord of your life got good news. News that's so good you almost couldn't believe it. That's what the gospel means. News that's so good that you can't even really fathom it. It's that Jesus came and he made a way for you and me to enter in to relationship with God. To become his children. To be cleansed and forgiven. To be set free and healed. It's his will for you. It's his desire. It's his heart. There's no favorites. I said it before. There's no partiality with God. This is the gospel. This is the good news. It says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 that if you believe in your heart that Christ Jesus is Lord, that he died for your life, God, that God raised him from the dead you shall be saved goes on in verse 10 to say this for a person believes in their heart trust Jesus and his death for them his love not on your own ability not on your own righteousness but on his death on his love, on the finished work that he performed on the cross where the victory was won. When you put your trust there, it results in righteousness. And when you confess Jesus as Lord, it results in salvation the forgiveness of your sin, the, the turnaround that you're looking for in your life and your situation. So I want to lead all of you that are in that place where you've had enough of doing it on your own, of walking life out in your own strength, of letting your own plan unfold when you know that God has so much more for you. There's so many of you that are listening tonight that have a, a discontentment and some of you, you might not even be out of work right now. Things might actually look kind of nice because you're hanging out at home with the family and you've got some money in the bank, but you're discontent in your heart. Jesus is calling you. He's calling you into relationship. He's calling you to give your heart. Life is no respecter of person. Only Jesus is. And regardless of where you're at, I, I see men and women 
of influence and men and women that are tired coming to a place of exchange tonight. It's this simple. These aren't magic words. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you believe in your heart and then confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. It's that simple. That's the news that's too good to be true is all you have to do is believe and trust Jesus and give him your life because he laid his down for you. But you shall be saved. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And if you're moved in your heart and you want to put your faith and trust in Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer after me. It's simple, but it's life changing. Like I said, in early August of 2005, I didn't know what to say. It was help, Jesus. It was, it was a simple cry from my heart that changed everything. There's many of you I see tonight that are in that same place. You're one encounter away from everything changing. Just want you to repeat this after me. Jesus, I believe you. I believe that you love me so much that you came to earth, that you laid your life down, that you died on a cross for me. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I put my trust in your great love, in your death. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you that are watching at home, it's that simple. Do you trust Jesus? You could be sitting in a hotel room right now, high on drugs. You could have a glass of alcohol in your hand right now. It doesn't matter. If you'll just put your faith and trust in Jesus and his unfailing love for you, he's with you. If you'll begin to turn to him through all of the affairs and the ups and the downs and the trials you'll face in life, he'll guide you. He'll lead you. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He'll never, ever leave you. He'll never, ever forsake you. Thank you, Lord. I feel there's an unusual just anointing in this place to break addiction, to bring deliverance in the area of mental health issues. Yeah. Right now, I just speak freedom. God, I thank you that the same way that you delivered me, the same way that you met me, on that canal bank in August of 2005 with track marks all up and down my arm that you would begin to break into the hearts of men and women. I see opioid, opiate addictions breaking right now in Jesus' name. As you fix your gaze upon Jesus, as you begin to open your hearts and tell him yes, as you begin to cry out to him, he's making the difference. I see alcoholism being broken in this time of quarantine, there's many of you that have been running to a bottle as a crutch, as a comfort. When Jesus says, I want to be that for you. I'm not trying to condemn anyone. I'm just saying Jesus wants to be your everything. And he doesn't want anything but him to be your master. I speak liberty right now and freedom. Anxiety is breaking in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. God's just releasing peace right now. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. I feel like there's three of you right now that are watching. You're struggling with an overwhelming sense of wanting to take your own life. You know, sometimes it 
God will allow us to reach a place of complete surrender and brokenness. That's what happened to me. He didn't author it, but in the midst of my choices and my decisions, his goodness intervened when I felt like I couldn't go on anymore and I wanted to take my own life. He nudged my heart. I feel like he's, he's wanting to do the same. He's a gentleman. He's just asking you to open up your hearts. I see the spirit of suicide lifting off of three people right now as you turn to Jesus. I speak right now to that spirit and I command it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to take its grips off of the people of God. I declare that you'll not have the final say in Jesus' name. And I say where there's been despair and hopelessness, that a confident expectation of good, a confident expectation that you're going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living is rising up right now in your heart and your mind. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I just want to encourage any of you that are watching. I feel like we're supposed to pray for a minute, but I, I want to want to just jump on the the topic of addiction. And Gus had brought up if any of you are struggling with addiction, or you know you have a loved one that is changed my life. I encountered God. I came into the discipleship program of Teen Challenge. I'd never read the Bible before. I didn't understand anything about it. I came into a radical environment of discipleship that utterly changed my life. And I'm so thankful for that. I had to get out of the circle that I was in. I had to get out of my environment and God opened that door for me. And if you know someone or if you're struggling with addiction and you need help, you can go. Yeah, there is hope. And it's in Jesus. You can go to aztc.org. That's az and then Arizona TC is teenchallenge.org. You can check out the program. They're not just helping men. They're helping men and women of all ages around the state of Arizona. Check it out online. Call them. They've got great programs all around the state. If you know someone that's struggling with addiction, my deliverance and my liberty was completely supernatural, but I needed an intense community. Your story can look so much different than mine, but where God wants to take you is the same, the fullness of what he's planned and designed for you. And, and you know what, also, um, Preston, um, right now as you're sharing about Arizona, what just rose up in my spirit is in New Mexico, uh, uh, Pastor Robert, um, who's a graduate also, him and his wife, of Teen Challenge went to the program here. They're the directors. They're the directors of New Mexico, men and women. So um, why don't you encourage? Okay, I, I just felt like somebody. I don't know who. who there's somebody that needed needs to know about that. That's available in New Mexico. They're doing an unbelievable job. They got the. They, they, they identify. They've been there. God's brought them out. They have uh, just a compassion, an understanding. Uh, and I can't, I just, I just, in my spirit, as you just talked about Arizona, God dropped in my spirit, New Mexico, somebody in New Mexico or nearby New Mexico or someone that can benefit. And I want to encourage you to get a hold of them. And I, I don't have the information off the top of my head as far as the number, but I guess you can just go to New Mexico Teen Challenge. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like Gus said, you know, we have a dear, dear brother by the name of Robert Marquez, his wife, Tracy Marquez. They're the executive state directors of New Mexico Teen Challenge. Uh, God, God has just done such a powerful uh, work in Robert's life. I have another dear friend who's a director for him. They have a men and a women's program, uh, both in the, in the state of New Mexico. You can Facebook uh, Teen Challenge of New Mexico. You can check them out. You can get online and just Google Teen Challenge of New Mexico. They've got a great men's program. They've got a great women's program. If you're in New Mexico or Texas or if you're in Arizona and you need to get out of the state, you want to change, check out Teen Challenge of New Mexico. We love you, Robert. We love you, Tracy. Watch some of you see this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Did you, did you have anything else that you have? Yes. I just, I just want to pray for, for the body. For us as believers right now. 
that we would be able to seize this moment and this time and this opportunity. This isn't a time for us to shrink back in fear, beloved. This is the time that we would rise up as a city on a hill, that the church would rise up in media with solutions, that the church would rise up with hope and courage and trust in their God. The eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro, looking for a generation whose heart is completely His, that He could prove Himself strong in demonstrations of power, in setting addicts free, in bringing solutions to business, in, in being innovative, and in, in touching lives in the midst of what we're facing in our nation. God wants us to rise up. God wants us to take the forefront and to impact this nation like never before. It's not a time to shrink back. It's not a time to be fearful. I just want to pray for you that this would be a season of great rest and great peace. That this would be a season that God would begin to speak to you. I see business owners and innovators, men and women that are called into ministry being launched out of this season. And this time, there's a reset button in the spirit that's being hit right now. God wants to recalibrate the way that we think, the way that we do church. And the impact that we have. Father, I thank you right now for your blood-bought church. And I thank you that it's in this season that the revelation of sonship, the revelation of sons and daughters are awakened in the hearts of your people. I thank you for a passion, God, for the presence of God in this season as men and women are confined to their homes. God, I pray that you would be there all in all, that you would meet them where they're at, God, that you would begin to consume, God, that you would begin to ignite fires within homes, that you would begin to raise up a company that would go evangelistically, God, to their families, God, to their sphere of influence, to their neighborhood and community. A company of Men and women that, like David, would know how to strengthen and encourage themselves in the Lord in the midst of the darkest of seasons. A company of believers that, like David, in the midst of everything in their life being shooken, could say, surely, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all of the days of my life. In Jesus' name, thank you. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are so thankful that you joined us. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. live. Get the word out. And don't forget prayer meeting live. Streaming it live here Monday night at 7 o'clock. That's Arizona time, 7 p.m. Praise the Lord. We love you. Jesus loves you. Victory in Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. Yes.
more abundant. We love you. We bless your 